In this presentation, we will be recording transactions for both a sales discount and purchase discount, comparing and contrasting the two. Our information will be on the left side. We'll be entering that into our general journal, and then we'll be posting that not to the general ledger, but to a worksheet. Worksheet will give us a quick view of the activity, perfect for just a few transactions, giving us both the beginning balance, the activity, and then the ending balance. Within our general journal, we will have both debit and credit column. Credits also represented with bracketed or negative numbers. Within our trial balance, however, we will have the debits and credits represented by debits having uh, no brackets or positive numbers, credits having brackets or negative numbers to uh, decrease the complexity of the worksheet and have less columns. And then it will also help with the formulas. Note down here, that we see we are in balance by the green zeros representing that the debits minus the credits equal zero and therefore the debits equal the credits. We're gonna then enter our information into the entries and get to our ending balance. We currently have assets in green. We've got the liabilities in orange, the equity in light blue, income accounts of revenue and expenses in the dark blue. We have our net income calculated here. So it's gonna be the 107 minus the 5,000 giving us that 102. First transaction says received cash. And then we have cash discount on sale term two, uh, two slash 10 in slash 30. So the concept here is what we're trying to say is we are receiving cash. We're receiving cash not because we made a sale at this point in time, but because we made a sale in the past in accordance with these terms, and now we're getting paid for it. So if we break this down, the idea is that uh, we had a sale and now we're getting paid, and we gotta figure out what these terms mean. The terms mean two slash 10 in slash 30. That's a 2% discount if we're paid within 10 days. Otherwise, the normal pay period is 30 days. If we get paid outside of 30 days, we could take collective action at that time. So those are gonna be the terms. Now, we're gonna assume here that we are getting paid within the discount period. So whenever we see something like this, we could start to construct the journal entry uh, just from scratch here and say, okay, we got money. Is cash affected? Yeah, we received cash. And then we can think of the rest of the journal entry. But it might help to actually record this journal entry, what the actual sale was first, just to write that down in basically a worksheet and then think of what we would have to do if we received the payment within the discount period. So when we actually made the sale, what must have happened? We gotta be able to visualize, think back and see this, especially if we're working in smaller questions like multiple choice questions. If we made a sale on account, we didn't get cash, we got instead accounts receivable. So we'll first record the accounts receivable in our worksheet. So this isn't the journal entry we're, we're doing here. This is gonna be what happened prior. So we're gonna copy the accounts receivable. I'm gonna put it down here in our worksheet in cell G19, right click and paste one, two, three. It's a debit balance account. We're gonna say it went up when we uh, made the sale because people owe us more money. We're gonna do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which is a debit. So we're gonna put it on the books for, we would have put it on the books for the full amount to 2,800, not net of the discount at the point of time that we record it. That's gonna be the format in which we record this. So we're gonna say it's 2,800. We're gonna credit something. I'm gonna represent that with a negative and then point to the cell, taking that number and flipping the sign. So there's the credit. Now we just need to know what that account would be. And of course we made a sale it would have been sales or revenue. So here's the revenue portion of it. So it's a credit balance. We know that we're gonna credit it because we debited the receivable. Also know we're gonna credit it because it's a credit balance account and therefore goes up in the credit direction. Uh, revenue always going up. So we're gonna copy this and scroll down to our worksheet, right click and paste one, two, three. We could indent if we would like. So we're gonna go to the home tab, alignment and increase indenting. Can also do that by double clicking and selecting the space bar. So that's gonna be our journal entry. Now, we're not gonna record the cost of goods sold portion of it because this is really what we are concerned with, this piece here. Now, what's gonna happen when we get payment typically is that we're gonna get the cash now, meaning we receive the cash for the receivable, and then we would um, record the receivable that would be going down uh, once we got the cash. So we can start to construct this now 
We're going to say we got cash. I'm going to copy the cash. It has a debit balance. We're going to make it to go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit. So I'm going to copy the cash, right click and copy, put that in cell C5, right click and paste, one, two, three. Now the problem is that we're not going to get 2,800 if we receive the cash within the discount period. How much would we get? We would get something uh, less than that, of course. If we wanted to calculate that, we could think about our worksheet down here. And just to, just to get an idea of this discount, uh, it's useful to know how to do this a couple different ways. Uh, if we were going to get an original amount of 2,800, and then we had a discount of, we're saying, uh, 2%. Uh, note that 2% if we had a decimal is 0 0.02. 0 0.02 would be 2%. So that's 0.02, and if we made it a percentage in Excel, we can go to the Home tab and make it a percent numbers group and make it a percent. It'll make the decimal go over two places and add a percentage time. If we multiply that out, then we're going to say this equals 8, uh, 2008 times 2%, and that can give us 56. That's the discount. This is the discount rate, and this is the discount. But then how much cash are we going to get? The cash we're going to get is going to be equal to this original 2,800 minus the 56 discount. Now it's useful to, to note also that uh, we could do that at one step. And if you're thinking about a, a sale or something like that, if you go to the store and there's a sale, we might want to do this a bit faster in the calculation. We could say if the original was 2,800, we're going to say that instead of... Um, the, the discount rate, uh, we're going to have the rate that we're going to pay. This is the discount rate versus rate pay. And that's going to be equal to 1 or 100% minus 2% or 0.02. I'm going to add some decimals, go into the Home tab, Alignment, Add Decimals. So in other words, if we're going to uh, not pay 2%, we are going to pay 100% minus 2% or 98%. This would be in decimal format. If we want to make it in percentage format, we can go to the Home tab, Numbers group, and make it a percent. And then we can just skip right down here to cash and say we're going to say equals 2008 times to 98%, and that's how much cash we're going to pay. So this, this little quicker way of doing it is pretty useful because uh, any kind of sale or anything, of course, that's uh, a calculation you can do. It would be a bit quicker to see how much you would pay. So we're going to say that one more time here. We're going to say the cash we're going to get is equal to 2,800 times, and we could say 1 minus the discount 0.02, and that'll give us our 2,744. Then uh, we, we, the credit would typically go to accounts receivable. So I'm going to, put, I'm going to say that's going to be true. So I'm going to copy that. Table. I'm going to skip a line though because there's going to be this discount problem here. So it's not going to be just two transactions. There's going to be one more. So I'm going to put it down here in C7. Right click and paste one, two, three. Now the problem is we can't make it go down by 2,744 for accounts receivable. If we did so, then we'd be left with the difference. The discount showing on our books as still being owed by the customer. So when we record the receivable, we need to take the entire thing off the books. It went on the books for 2,800, 2,800, 2,800. It needs to go off the books for 2,800 if we're representing receivable going down to the point where this customer no longer owes us money, as they do not because we gave them a discount. Okay, so that's going to be the other side of it. Now we have this difference here, the debits and credits not being the same. We can calculate this discount by just saying, uh, you know, if we add up the debits and credits and, and say 2,800 is the credit minus 2,744 is the debit, there's the 56, which of course is also the discount or 2,800 times 2%. So there's a few different ways we can get to this, this number. We can, we can construct this journal tree a few different ways. Typically, I would think of cash first, then the receivable, and then this account which in this case, what account would that be? We got to find it. We know we need the 56 in order to be in balance in order for these two debits, 2,800 to equal that credit, 2,800. What should it be? We're going to say it goes to this account here, sales discount. 
sale discount. Note where it is, it's going to be on the income statement. It's a contra sales account. In other words, it acts kind of like a uh, expense in that it has a debit balance, goes up in the debit direction, bringing down net income. However, it's really a, a contra sales account, meaning uh, what happened here is we obviously uh, increased sales when we made this journal entry by too much. We increased sales by 2,800. We're not going to get 2,800. We overstated sales by $56. So you would think that we would decrease it with this debit by the 56. But once again, we never really decrease revenue. Revenue only goes up. We're going to make some exception or workaround to rather than decreasing this with a debit, put that debit to a contra account, that account of sales discount. So this is going to be the account sales discount. I'm going to copy that, right click and copy. We're going to put that in C6, right click and paste one, two, three. There's our journal entry. If we highlight the entire thing, the debits minus the credits equal zero. We are in balance. We're going to make the credit uh, indent a bit. Go into the home tab, alignment, increase indent. You can also do that with the space bar three times. That's going to be our first transaction. Let's post it, see what happens. Here's our cash up top. Here's our cash on the trial balance. We're going to post that to sell I5, I5. So within I5, I'm going to select equals, point to that 2744. This debit will go up in the debit direction from 1107800 by 2744 to 110.544. Then we have the discount. Here is the discount on our journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance. We're going to be in our center column in cell I12. I12, we will say equals point to that 56, bringing the balance up from zero by 56 to 56. Also bringing down net income. So that will decrease net income. And that's important. That could be uh, multiple choice questions. I'll often ask something like that. And then we're going to say the accounts receivable is here. Accounts receivable is here. We're going to be in I6. We are in I6. And we will say equals and point to that 2,800. The accounts receivable of 10,200 will be going down by 2,800 to 7,400. So that's going to be our first uh, journal entry. I'm going to reset our worksheet. So we have our worksheet for the second component here. I'm going to reformat this cells these two percentage i want these gone by highlighting this cells above it going to the home tab and hitting this paintbrush which is just going to copy the formatting of it and then we'll just click down here and it'll it'll take the decimals away and the percentage and then i'm just going to delete this whole thing and see see if cleared worksheet for our next uh, our next problem so the next one says pay cash purchase discount on sale terms 2 10 and 30. so these two i'm putting these on the same sheet because they look very similar but they're slightly different of course this up here is the discount that we give to our customer and this down here is a discount given to us by our vendor so in this case uh, if we think about this we might want to think first about what happened in the past what's the prior transaction that set up the fact that we are now paying uh, what happened in the past is we made a purchase. I'm going to assume that we purchased merchandise. So we purchased merchandise. Merchandise must have gone up. Uh, therefore, it has a debit balance here. It must have gone up with a debit. So I'm going to copy this, put it down here in our worksheet. This is what happened in the past, before, and what we need to know about when we record this transaction. Right click and paste one, two, three. It was for 7,000. We then credit something 7,000. I'm going to do that with a negative and point to that number. And the credit's not going to be cash. Cash isn't going to be paid for this. Instead, it's going to be uh, the accounts payable. So the bad thing went up. The liability went up. So we'll copy accounts payable. Copy accounts payable. We're going to put that in G20 and right click paste one, two, three. So there's our journal entry that we that sets up basically this this transaction. Then of course what happens is uh, we we pay the cash. We're paying off the accounts payable. Now normally that would be pretty straightforward and easy to think about. However, we have this discount and it looks very similar up here. We have the same terms, but these are the terms given to us by the vendor rather than the terms we give to our customer. So we have the terms two ten 
uh, in 30 given to us and we're gonna say that we paid it within the 10 days so same kind of problem same kind of idea and we're gonna say okay well cash is affected yeah cash is affected we paid cash so I'm gonna copy that I'm gonna skip a line for a new journal entry and skip another line because we need to credit the cash cash has a debit balance we paid it needs to go down we're gonna do the opposite thing to it a credit so in C10, I'm in cell C10, I'm gonna right click and paste, one, two, three. Then in this, uh, the payment here, again, we don't know, we have to calculate basically what did we pay. Same type of calculation, of course. Uh, I'm gonna do that, I'll do that in one step. We'll do it up here. It's just gonna be equals. Well, let's think about it one more time. We'll be in our worksheet. We're gonna say we had the 7,000, the discount rate, is going to be 0.02 so 0.02 is two percent because this means two percent if we pay in 10 days otherwise we pay in 30 days we're going to say we paid in 10 days so if i want to see the decimals home tab numbers increase decimals if we want to make it a percent we make it a percent moving the decimal two places over adding a percentage just by clicking that there then we can multiply that out in cell h 24 equals 7,000 times the 2% equals H22 times H23, 7,000 times 2% times 0.02 equals uh, 140. That is the discount, not how much we paid. So then we paid 7,000 minus 140 equals this cell, 7,000 H22 minus this cell, 140. Once again, we could do that with one step by saying not the rate that we didn't pay, but the rate we did pay, which is equal to one or 100% minus 0 0.02, 2%. That gives us something that we can't see because we don't have decimals until we go to the home tab. Numbers group, increase decimals, 98%. If we didn't pay 2%, we paid 98%. If we want to make that a percentage, we select the percentage item, moving the decimal two places and adding a percentage. So then we can go straight down. We can go from the 7,000 down up here, down to how much we paid directly by saying this is equivalent to the 7,000 in I-22 times the 98 in I-23, giving us uh, 6,860. So that's how much we paid. We want that in the credit side here. So I'm going to do that same calculation, starting not with an equals, but with a negative so that we end up with a negative number. That 7,000 times 0.98, that gives us the um, 6860, uh, 6860. I'm going to increase the indenting, home tab, alignment, increase indenting. There is that. The second component when we pay cash will typically be the accounts payable. We already bought the merchandise. We're not gonna be debiting the merchandise or increasing the merchandise. Instead, we're going to be decreasing the liability. Liability has a credit balance. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it here, which will be a debit. So we're gonna copy the accounts payable, right click and copy, putting that in top on top in cell C9, right click and paste one, two, three. Now the tricky thing, once again here, is that the debit will not be for the cash that was paid of 6,860. If we did so, we would still have on our books uh, an indication that we owe the difference between what we paid and what we originally put in accounts payable, which would be um, equal to the discount of 140. We don't owe that anymore because we paid within the discount period and therefore um, got to pay less. And therefore, it needs to come off the books for the entire amount, even though we did not pay the entire amount, 7000 So there's the 7000 Then, of course, we're not in balance. The difference, this minus this, is the discount amount of 140 So we can put that here. We need a credit of 140 in order for the debits to equal the credits. I'm going to use that with uh, our sum type formulas. It's called like the plug formula, I call it. And we're going to say instead of equals, I'm going to say negative and then sum the sum function and we're going to sum up double click in the sum we're going to sum up these four cells so whatever's in those four cells which is the 7000 debit and the 6860 credit enter will give us a credit it'll, it'll add that up which would have been 
if we highlight this 140 and it'll flip the sign for a negative 140. We could of course also have calculated it as 7,000 minus the 2% to give us the 140, which is the discount amount. Now what most students, almost all students, when they're first learning this get wrong is that we're going to say, okay, well, what should this be? And if you look at a trial balance, you're going to say, well, I'm looking for something with a discount in it because I got a discount and you're going to pick up sales discount. But note, the sales discount represents a discount we give to the customers. It's a, it's a contra sales account representing a sales discount that we give for our sales. And this is a purchase discount. So you would think, okay, well, where's the purchase discount? area that we need to be putting the discount to possibly it would be a contra you know expense account but what's really happening here is we're assuming we didn't sell the inventory yet at this point in time or it's going to be an effect on the inventory what really happened if we look over here we said we paid invent for the inventory seven thousand dollars we didn't pay seven thousand dollars we only paid at the end of the day six thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars the difference then of 140 is what we overstated inventory by. And so the confusing thing, most confusing thing about the purchase discount, especially when we do it in conjunction at the same time as when we're learning the sales discount is that the actual discount amount, in this case, the 140 doesn't go to any account with the term discount in it. It decreases the merchandise inventory because we had overstated it when we originally purchased it. So it, it's at a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by the credit of 140. So I'm going to copy the merchandise inventory. We're going to put that in cell C11, right click and paste one, two, three. Going to increase the indenting home tab alignment, increase indenting. So there's going to be our transaction. We're going to post this now. So here's our accounts payable. Here's our accounts payable on the trial balance. We're going to post it to I8. So we are in I8. We will say equals and point to that 7,000. This is a credit. That's a debit. Those are opposites, bringing the amount of 13,500 credit down by 7,000 to 6,500. Next, we're going to post the cash. So here's the cash on the journal entry. Here's the cash on the trial balance. We want to be here in I5. I5. Something's in it. We then will double click on it, go to the end of it, say plus and then point to that cash amount, that 6,860, which will bring this debit balance of 110,540 down by 6,860 to 103,684. Then we got the merchandise inventory. Here's the merchandise inventory. Here it is on the trial balance. We are in cell I7. Within I7, we're gonna say equals, point to that 140, and that 27,000 is going to go down by the credit of 142, 26,860. That'll put us back in balance. Note that the second transaction doesn't affect the income statement at all. None of these accounts are income statement accounts, whereas the first transaction does affect the income statement. The first transaction is reversing, in essence, part of the sale we made. The second transaction is reversing, in essence, part of the inventory we purchased, part of the asset that we purchased which we had not sold yet, has not yet, or we're assuming it hasn't been sold yet. It hasn't gone into, at this point, cost of goods sold, uh, which is when it would hit the income statement at the point of sale.